Hi, Chef Greg here again, uh, coming from my home to your home. As you can see, my project's coming along pretty well, and I'm gonna get this shoe molding in sooner or later. But for right now, we're gonna go make dinner again downstairs in the kitchen. So come on, let's go. So in the world of culinary competitions, one of the most exciting things that you can ever participate in or even watch is called a mystery basket competition. And this is where the competitor or the chef gets a basket of ingredients and they don't know what they are but yet they have to make a meal or several courses out of the ingredients in the basket. Usually there's some kitchen staples that are always around like sugar and salt and flour and those kinds of things, but what's in the basket, nobody knows. So this is my biggest mystery basket right here. And I get asked on almost on a nightly basis, hey, what's for dinner? And I have to think on my feet and come up with stuff that I can find in this mystery basket. So I'm gonna take a look in here and I'll meet you over at the cutting board. So after my trip to the fridge, I found some wonderful vegetables in there, bell peppers, asparagus, broccoli, a carrot, and I even scored big and I found some uh, rotisserie chicken that was left over. So I'm gonna use that because it makes a wonderful, wonderful stir fry. So tonight we're gonna have a chicken and vegetable stir fry. And after I took a quick trip through the pantry, I did find some jasmine rice too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting up some of these peppers and make sure that uh, when you buy your peppers that you give them a rinse and you wash them before you start to use them. A lot of times they have some dust or a little bit of sand or something on them from when they've been brought in. And we want to make sure that we're using clean vegetables. So, always that. Now we're going to cut these vegetables kind of small because we want them to cook quickly. And some of these vegetables we're going to cut on a little bit of an angle, which is also known as a term that's called a bias cut. Now asparagus, we don't want to go all the way down because the stalks get very fibrous and are too chewy and we won't be able to eat them very well. So we're going to put our asparagus. We want everything to cook at the same time as well. So that's why we're going to cut, cut them just about the same size. So when the carrots are done cooking, the bell peppers will be done cooking. Everything will be done at the same exact time. We might have a few extra here. We've got a lot of vegetables. Now one thing with broccoli that I like is you can almost get two vegetables out of the same thing. If you trim off the florets like this, you can use those. And then sometimes if you have the longer broccoli stalks, this part right here, if you peel it down a little bit or cut a little bit off the edges of it, that piece is very good. It's very crunchy and it's got great texture. The reason why we cut the outside off is similar to asparagus, Broccoli is very fibrous around the, the stalk and it'll be very, very chewy. So we've got a little bit of broccoli stalk in there. Probably more florets than we'll need. But we're going to cut these small as well. So these just cook right in the stir fry and we have a nice crunch to them when we eat them. I also want to say, uh, give a little shout to my daughter Ava's helping me out tonight as well. Give me a thumbs up, Ava, and uh, let everyone know that you're there taking uh, taking the film or the video of me doing this cooking video. And the whole goal here is we want to show you some easy, quick dishes that you can make with some foods that you're going to have, hopefully around your house or in your fridge, maybe in the pantry. Right now, uh, getting to the market isn't the easiest, so if you've got this stuff around, we can come up with some different dishes and make things a little bit easier. I found were already sliced so I didn't have to slice those. Those are already rinsed for me and those are ready to go. And the last thing to do will be to cut up some of this red bell pepper and the chicken. So I'm going to finish doing that and then I'll meet you guys at the stove. All right we're back at the stove and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting this jasmine rice going because that's actually going to take the longest out of everything. So I want to cook it in vegetable stock and it's I'm using a cup and a half of jasmine rice. And with different rices, you have to use different ratios of liquid. So wild rice, which is actually a grass, is a two to one ratio, and you would use two parts liquid or water to one part of the grain or the grass. Uh, boreal rice, uh, risotto, is also uh, a different ratio. That's three to one. And the jasmine rice that we're using tonight is a one and a half to one 
uh, ratio. So, like I said, I've got one and a half cups of jasmine rice here, and I've got two and a half, two, I'm sorry, two and a quarter cups of vegetable stock ready to go. And as soon as that comes to a simmer, I'm gonna add my rice to it. And then what I wanna do is, I just wanna kinda of gently shake the pan a little bit and spread the rice out so that it's even inside the pot. So there's, there's not that bulge in the center and it doesn't get cooked. So I'm gonna distribute the rice evenly inside there. And sometimes what I'll do even to kind of speed things up a little bit is I'll take a pan and put it over the top. That'll help get it a little bit, um, trap some of that steam that's in there, give it a little pressure and help the rice start out a lot faster. And also kind of preheats my pan for me. So I'll be back in a minute and then we'll start cooking the vegetables and the chicken and we'll get our stir fry finished. So our rice is just about done. I've turned it down and I've also put a pan over it to keep some of the residual steam in there to keep it warm and just to finish cooking it. Now, one thing I didn't mention with jasmine rice, it's very similar to basmati rice where you want to rinse the rice before you cook it. So I like to put mine in a bowl, fill it with water, strain it, and repeat that process about three times to get rid of some of that excess starch because just like the boreo rice, the jasmine and the basmati have a lot of starch and we're not using them like we would use a boreo in a risotto dish. So we kind of want to rinse some of that excess starch off. So be sure to rinse the basmati or the jasmine rice, whichever rice you decide to use for this dish. Um, both are great rices. So in a hot skillet, we've got our skillet nice and hot here. We're gonna add a little bit of sesame oil, probably about two tablespoons of that. And we're gonna start with a tablespoon of uh, garlic in there with it. We're gonna let that garlic cook. And we like to usually use the term, we like to let it bloom. So what happens is it kind of expands, you can kind of see it. And when you see it, the term bloom will make sense when you, when you actually see it do it. And a little bit more. So this meal is pretty strong. You don't want to get carried away with it. It's very aromatic, got a lot of flavor to it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these mushrooms into this pan. And the reason I'm doing that first is because mushrooms have so much water in them, we want to cook those and get uh, some of the water out of them before we add the rest of our vegetables. Because remember, we're making a stir fry. We don't want soggy vegetables. We want our vegetables to have a nice crisp and a bright, vibrant appearance. So I'm gonna turn this heat up even more, get these mushrooms cooking with this garlic. And as soon as they're almost done, then I'll start to add the rest of my vegetables to this dish. So I'm a spice fan. Um, my daughter, my wife, not so much, but I'd like to put a little bit of crushed red pepper in there. What do you think, Ava? Should I do it? Yeah, all right, we'll do a little bit. Don't tell mom. Uh, we won't put too much in there, but we'll put a little bit in there. Okay, a little cracked black pepper. salt. Now you can make your own stir fry sauce if you like, but sometimes if you're in a pinch or you might just have it in your pantry as well like we did, we have a little jar of uh, stir fry sauce. But sometimes that's a good go-to if you're uh, under the gun or it's, uh, you don't have time to make your own sauce. There's a lot of different stir fry sauces out there. And um, this one just happens to be a pico membrane, but we've used several different ones. So our mushrooms are cooked. Now we're gonna add our rest of our vegetables in there. Kind of get all those going in that same dish. Keeping that heat on high. We're gonna kind of toss them around in here. Now, if you notice the mushrooms are not really giving you as much moisture or steam as you'd like, and you want to get the vegetables a little crisper uh, or a little quicker cooked to them, sometimes what I'll do is uh, I'll actually add a little bit, just a dash of water. I want to make sure my pan's really hot before I do that. And I don't want to add much, because that's enough to give it a little bit of steam underneath when it helps cook the vegetables. It took a little bit away when we put the mushrooms in, but 
on if you're putting a little bit back in there. So the good thing with using something like this rotisserie chicken is it's ready to go. We don't have to worry about the chicken being done, is the chicken cooked, I don't know. And then somebody gets a piece of chicken and you're left trying to explain how it came out and it wasn't cooked. I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. So we've got the chicken ready to go. Our vegetables look great. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit of this sauce. And as I add the sauce, it's going to start to simmer, which is also going to help finish cooking our vegetable. Now let's take a quick piece of this rice. How's the rice look? Good? All right. So we're in business on the rice. Stir fry is just about done. We added some crushed chili, we've got some pepper in there, a little sea salt. Now we're going to fold in the chicken. And the thing I also like about the rotisserie chicken is that it has the, the white and the dark meat in it. So it's not just all brass or anything like that. So it has a tendency not to be dry. It has a, a really nice texture to it, kind of a natural texture. Now you can go and do a lot of different things with this. You can add all sorts of different things here, uh, different types of seeds or nuts or anything like that. But once again, I'm cooking from a mystery basket. This is what I had to work with tonight and this is what we're gonna have. So there's our chicken vegetable stir fry. And we've got our jasmine rice right here, ready to go. And it's time to eat. So once again, thanks for joining me from my kitchen to yours. Enjoy, have a stir fry. And I'll see you soon. Thank you.